Good morning, Bethlehem. It's good to be with you this morning. It's a joy to be here amidst the birds and the flowers and share a bit of time with you. Now, I love Bethlehem, and I could speak the whole time just about the blessings that I have known from being at Bethlehem. But what I'd like to share with you this morning is a little different. I'd like to share with you my experience of God at work in a life that has not always been easy. Because you see, I believe that by speaking about some of these challenges, we can encourage others to be faithful as well. I grew up in a family of pastors. My dad is a pastor, my brother is a pastor, my grandfather was a pastor, my uncle was a pastor, and my uncle and my dad were also missionaries. We went to West Africa when I was in junior high. And many people have said, oh, that must have been really cool. Well, maybe it could have been. But the first year that I was there, in the dormitory, I was raped by my confirmation pastor. And the second year that I was there, I was in the midst of the first large-scale modern African massacre. These two events have left me marked for life. It was not until my children were in grade school that I really began to deal with that first by going into a deep suicidal depression and then slowly with a lot of hard work coming back from that. My doctor told me that unless I found an abuse therapist that he would put me in the hospital. Well I found an abuse therapist but that was before the days when medical insurance covered therapy and we couldn't afford it. And I went walking around the block thinking, well, then what? And while I was walking around the block, all I can say is the Spirit of God gave me the answer. And I got back to the house, and I had no more than been in the house for 15 minutes, and my father called me with the same answer. And so I began therapy with Karen and I was with her for a number of years. And while I was with her, I did a lot of poetry writing and a lot of hymn writing. Not of it, none of it terribly good, but useful for me. Until one day, Karen said to me, have you ever considered being a pastor? And I said, who, me, a pastor? I'm not good enough to be a pastor. I'm not good enough. I felt worthless as I struggled from day to day and stumbled and bumbled. But over time, I thought about that more and more. And finally, I went and talked to an assistant to the bishop, and she said to me, we need people like you. And to have people like you in ministry means that you will need to plan on being in therapy for the rest of your life. Well, I think she was right on both counts. I have been in one sort of therapy or another for the rest of my life. And I really do believe that God has placed me in his kingdom work to do work that I am uniquely qualified to be able to do. And even in my retirement, well, I don't think that pastors ever fully retire. I still have the privilege of preaching a lot. But I see God's grace moving through so, so many pieces of my life. And I just really needed to share that with you today. Because you see, I think that no matter what our stories are, God can take those stories 
and use them for his kingdom work. So God bless you this day and always. Good morning and welcome to worship. We are now on the sixth Sunday after Easter and our 10th Sunday in quarantine. Crazy, hard to believe that it's been that long. But we are glad that you continue to worship with us on Sunday mornings and we welcome you wherever you are. Um, I wanna thank Roger and Dee Simon for sponsoring the radio broadcast today. And that is in honor of the birthdays of their children. In addition to those for whom we have been praying for the last few weeks, we want to add Kathy Young, Maria Larson, and Alice Haugen to our prayer list. They have all been struggling with some health concerns. I also would ask this week that you pray for Pastor Jay and I and your church council. We will gather as we usually do on the third Tuesday of the month this week, and this meeting will be where we start to talk about making decisions for how we will reopen um, as our government and our city does that. So those are difficult conversations, difficult decisions, and we would love your prayers for wisdom and discernment in this time. With that, we are ready to begin our worship. We'll begin as we usually do with confession and forgiveness. I invite you to join me in making the sign of the cross on yourself as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we prepare for confession, I invite you to adopt a prayer position. You might kneel or stand as you are able. Please take a moment of silence for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
In your Son, Jesus Christ, your faith, hope, and love abides, O God. 
save us from irritability and resentment, envy, boastfulness, arrogance, and rudeness, that we might bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, and endure all things, and that we might live in your love, the love of Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Good morning, BLC fam. Anna here for another children's message. I invite you to come a little bit closer to the screen to, to hear this message this morning. And I just want to say it's been really fun to get, see pictures from some of you uh, getting getting close to the screen, actually listening to what I say. Um, and some of you are getting a little closer than I normally would, but uh, whatever works. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're engaging uh, in these messages. Uh, and today we are talking about love. Uh, and you can follow along in your Spark Bible on page 546. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. So I'm really excited about this, this message this morning. Uh, and this story uh, or this scripture comes from the book of Corinthians. Uh, and that's the, the book that we were in last week as well. And it was a letter, remember, to our friends in Corinth. Uh, Paul, our friend Paul, was writing to them uh, to send them some reminders of things that they needed to hear, because uh, we all need those reminders, right? And this time, he was reminding them that love is the most important thing of all. And he reminded them what it looked like, what it felt like. Um, and he said that without love, it's just not enough. Uh, one of my favorite lines is at the beginning. It says, if I use words that everybody understands, but I don't have love? I'm just a clanging bell or a booming drum making noise. I don't want to be a clanging bell. I don't know about you. Um, but I hope that you know that this is true, that love is so important. It is the most important. I think we can all see that in our lives, that love is what binds us together and connects us. Uh, and without love, it is just not enough, not enough. So I have a little something to help you remember this scripture story. Um, at, the, the, at the end of chapter 13 that we read, it says that three things remain. Hope, faith, and then lastly, love, right? And so to help remind you that love is what binds it all together, that love is the greatest of all, I have a little magic trick. I have... Uh, two forks, and I have a nail. Can you see those? So I have two forks and a nail. If you want to go grab one in the kitchen and do this with me. And then I have, I pushed the nail between the two forks. So I had to push the forks together and then push the nail between the two forks. And um, it's a little magic trick in the sense it's more of a science trick than a, than a magic trick. Can you see how um, the nail and the forks are floating on my finger. Can you see that? I'll go a little lower, there you go. You see, and can you see that nail, the nail head in the middle there that is holding it all together? Pretty amazing, this looks kind of superhuman, right? But we know that there's some gravity involved, there's some uh, balance involved, um, so that these forks and nail don't fall off my finger, but you can see that this nail is holding it all together and is balancing it all together, just like love holds all of us together. So I pray that you see love this week, that you see where it is holding you together. I really feel it holding me together. I hope you feel it too. Um, and you know, something where I am excited to feel love uh, is in our VBS I wanna share with you that um, we are still doing VBS this summer. Uh, and I hope to feel that you can feel the love that I have that I am sharing with you through that and through all of the people that have collaborated um, when we are gonna get together and still be socially distant, but have some fun and remember that we are still connected even if we are a little bit distant and we are still loved even if we are far apart. Um, so. I want to let you know that that is June 22nd through 25th, and you can register now 
Uh, all BLC members can um, register now, and then we're going to open it up to community members that want to register uh, after May 31st. So um, I am excited to see you all there. I am excited to share that with you and to share God's love in person with you. I miss that. I miss that. So um, can you pray with me before we go? Let's put our hands together like we normally would, and you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for love. Thank you for holding us together with your love. Help us to see your love wherever we are. And all God's people said, amen. Bye, friends. Our scripture this week is a very familiar one, the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the love chapter, sometimes it's called. And it's so familiar that I thought we needed to hear it in different words for it really to sink in. So you will hear the reading twice this morning. This first reading will be my own translation from the original Greek, and then the, servant, the sermon will close with an adaptation of this text by another pastor. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak the language of humans and angels, but possess no love, I become an echoing gong or a symbol raising a war cry. And if I possess prophecy, and know all mysteries and all secret knowledge, and if I possess all faith so that I can remove mountains but possess no love, I am nothing. If I feed all with what I possess, and if I hand over my body in order to boast but do not possess love, it accomplishes nothing. Love is long-suffering. Love is gentle. Love is not jealous. Love is not self-aggrandizing. It is not inflated with pride. It does not behave in an unbecoming manner. It is not always striving. It does not incite. It doesn't count up bad things. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It covers all, believes all, hopes all, suffers all things patiently. Love never falls down. If, however, there is prophecy, it will be done away with. If tongues, they will cease. If secret knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and in part we prophesy. However, when the complete comes, the partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, thought like a child, reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I let the childish things pass away. For we see presently through a glass in obscurity, but then we will see face to face. Presently we know in part, but then I will know just as I am known fully. And now remain faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The Gospel of the Lord. In writing this translation, two things stood out to me over and over. The first is that I am daily failing at this kind of love. My kids would tell you that on our bad days, I am neither long-suffering nor gentle that I often behave in an unbecoming manner and I am definitely counting up the bad things. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm not alone in this feeling of failing though. 
especially among parents who have been home with their kids for these many weeks. We do love our children, our spouses, our parents, but we don't always show it. And if you are feeling guilty, like I do sometimes, about your failure to be consistently loving in word and deed, I want to offer you a word of grace this morning. I will tell you what I always tell couples who use this text for their wedding ceremonies. You will try to love this way and you will fail. For this kind of love is God's, not human. The only chance we have to love in this way is to rely on the power of God to enable us. And then to rely on the grace of God to forgive us when our love fails. But here's the second thing that I noticed as I was translating this week. That falling down, that failing, is part of the necessary process for us to grow up in love. Did you notice how often the phrase pass away was mentioned in this chapter? I never noticed it before because in the English translations that same Greek word gets translated a bunch of ways. But at every step in this love chapter, our ability to love more fully and deeply is connected to letting other things pass away letting them go, letting them die. What we realize as we grow in love is that parts of who we are, parts of what we want or think we deserve in life come in conflict with the love to which God has called us. And we face a choice every time these conflicts come up. Do we do what we want and thus fail in love? Do we let what stands in the way of love pass away so that we may know God more fully? That's a hard choice. But Paul reminds us throughout this chapter that in the end, Love is the only thing left standing. Everything else will pass away, but not love. All that we possess is worth nothing without love. But everything we possess can be taken away and love will remain. As we continue to learn how to love each other and our God through this pandemic, I invite you to consider what things you will let pass away so that love can grow up to be an adult inside you. I invite you to consider what tightly held beliefs, what self-righteousness you are holding on to that gets in the way of love. And I invite you to remember that there is grace for your failing every time. I want to close with another reading of this chapter, written by Pastor Katie Stenta, with language specific to this pandemic. It's beautiful, but it's challenging. So I invite you to open your ears and your heart to hear it. If I speak with all of the authority and power in the world, but have not love, my voice becomes blurred and untrustworthy. If I can move mountains, changing laws, changing history, changing minds, and have not love, my work becomes meaningless. If I proclaim victory, that we are great, the best, the most, and talk about all I have done for my family and my country, but have not love, 
I've gained absolutely nothing. Love does its best to wait till after the danger of disease has passed to hug a loved one. Love does not compare leaders, all of whom are doing the best they can to keep people safe. It does not gut Medicare and ignore the vulnerable and the elderly in the nursing homes as it boasts that it is doing everything possible to save lives. Love is not racist or bigoted. It is not ignorant or panic inducing. Love is not irritable or resentful. It wears its mask out of love and pays the essential workers more and understands how reliant we are on one another for survival. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It does not ignore the racial discrepancies in illness, treatment, or quarantine enforcement. Love rejoices in the truth even when the truth is hard. For it is through love that we bear all things even in sickness and death. Love believes all things, even in joblessness and loneliness. Love hopes all things, even as singing is silenced, the hope for the opportunity to sing again persists. Love can endure all things, even when we can't believe it especially when we can't believe it. Love endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, promises of the future beauty and success, they come to an end. Tongues, chattering gossip and lies, they too will cease. Even knowledge, will come to an end as humans are limited. And to think that we know more than a grain of how the world works is hubris. For we know only bits. Facts and science serve as only the beginning. And we can foresee some other bits. Arts and gospel serve to extend our knowledge beyond our own sphere and experience. But when the complete comes, the partial will end. God will give all knowledge to everybody. And if it is up to us, if we experience that knowledge as judgment or grace. For I am but a child of God, speaking and reasoning like a child, babbling the bits of love I understand to God and other humans. When I fully mature, when I join God, I will put away childish ways, jealousies, regrets, conspiracies, imposter syndromes, competitions, and internalized bigotries and self-hate. They will fade into the foolishness that they are. Now, I can barely glimpse God and love Sometimes I feel it when I briefly glimpse myself in the mirror and can actually affirm for a moment that I am God's beloved. Someday I will see love, God, each other, face to face. Now I acknowledge that even in the best of time, I can only know things in part. Someday I will know fully just as I am already known fully by God. Someday I will know myself fully and I will be fully known by others and acknowledged as belonging, not a piece or part of me, but all of me as a created beloved piece of God's love. And as faith, hope, and love abide today, Someday there will be no need for faith and hope. So fully will we be bathed and punctuated by love. Amen.
as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ throughout this festival season of Easter, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from he heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, keep us from spouting meaningless noise and turn our words and our actions ever towards love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire a deep and abiding appreciation of your creation in our hearts, O oh Lord so that we might love the world that you love and work for its healing and redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fan the flame of love in the hearts and minds of our leaders, O Lord, and use them to bring about your justice and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surround those who feel lonely and unlovable with your loving presence and make us witnesses to your love for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire researchers, epidemiologists, and doctors to vaccines and treatments that do your healing work. Bless and protect those serving the sick, and be present with the sick and the dying. Grant them faith in your all-encompassing and eternal love. We lift up to you today Kurt Halverson, Brenda Getch, Robin Ruthenbeck, Betty Woodward, Jack Christensen, Bill Brody, Jen Gantz, Dorothy Nidell, Kathy Young, Maria Larson, Pastor Don Roberts, Bonnie, and his caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn our hearts from selfish desires to realize your love and to love our neighbors. We pray for everyone whose work makes them vulnerable to getting sick. We pray especially today for Leanne Peabody Taggart. We pray your blessing too, Lord, upon our partners who share your mission, especially those at Mansfield Lutheran in Alden, Trinity Lutheran in Owatonna, the St. Olaf Student Congregation, Taimi Lutheran in Tanzania, Amani Lutheran in Tanzania, the Preventive Mental Health Ministry in Colombia, Dr. Mark and Linda Jacobson, Yambi Secondary School, and the ALCA Disaster Response. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Death does not quench our love for our family and friends, O Lord, who have gone before us. As they live eternally in your love, grant that their faithful lives may strengthen our faith and empower our service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the resurrection of your Son, O God, you destroy the power of death and remove your people's shame. By the power of your Holy Spirit, raise us up from sin and set us at the Paschal Feast 
that we may rejoice in the gift of salvation that Jesus has won for us. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those you're with. Call or text uh, someone else too to share the peace of our Lord. Oh, hi, kids. This is Mr. Gary, and I was just practicing up for Kids Acoustic Hoot Nanny. That's at 11 o'clock on Sunday. And Miss Anna invited me, and together we want to invite you to join us because we're going to sing a few songs, get to see our friends on Zoom, and get to be on Zoom, and it's going to be a hoot. It's a hoot nanny! So today at church, the theme was about love. And so I wanted to, as a preview, kind of play a song about love. So here's one that I came up with. Here we go. Love, love, love. That's what it's all about. Because God loves us. We love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. Everybody scream and shout. Because that's what it's all about. It's about love, love. Love. It's about love, love, love. Faith, faith, faith. That's what it's all about. Cause God loves us. We love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. Everybody scream and shout. Cause that's what it's all about. It's about faith, faith, faith. It's about faith, faith, faith. Oh, oh, oh. That's what it's all about, cause God loves us, we love each other, mother, father, sister, brother, everybody scream and shout, cause that's what it's all about, it's about hope, 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 it's about hope, 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 love, 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 that's what it's all about, cause God loves us, we love each other, Mother, father, sister, brother, everybody scream and shout, cause that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. 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 All right, hope to see you at Kids Acoustic Hoot Nanny coming up at 11 o'clock. Till then, bye. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh,
grace, Lamb of God. The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we conclude our worship. We may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.